it doesn't matter. What is your level of intelligence, what is your level of capability, introvert, extrovert, this, that, doesn't matter. Do you have the courage and commitment to make the possibility into your reality? That's all the question is. There is no such thing as extrovert or introvert, do not classify people like that. Some people see that they need to act and reach out. Some people see there is not much need for that. So maybe they are not on the Twitter and Facebook and whatever, this doesn't mean they're introvert. They have a life of their own. The difference between uh, this extrovert or introvert is, it's like mistaking your exhalation for inhalation and inhalation for exhalation. We should not judge people like this. Every human being has a right to be whichever way they want. But now the question is, if I am not extrovert, will I be able to do things in the world? That's a main aspect of the question. See, your ability to do things is not because you want to do things. I want to do something is my desire. Desire is just an intention. An intention won't make things happen. An intention will only set direction. Still you have to make the journey. Isn't it? Process is an end in itself. If you are absolutely devoted to the process, something will come out. But now we are interested in the consequence, not in the process. This goal-orientedness, I want to get there, I want to get there, we become too goal-oriented. Goal-oriented means we are interested in the consequence, but we are not interested in the process. I think you should look at life like this. You must see how to enhance this one. Enhance this one means not blow up your ego in a big way. Enhance the life that you are. When I say life, I am talking about the life that you are. I am not talking about your body, I am not talking about the structure of your mind, I am not talking about, see, when people say life, you are supposed to decipher. They could be talking about their home, they could be talking about their relationship, they could be talking about their car or their dog or something. My life means something. I am not talking about that, I am talking about the life that you are. Are you alive? Are you really alive? Or just a bundle of thoughts, emotions, ideas, prejudices, opinions, most people are just this. Because of that, we make conclusions, this is an introvert, this is an extrovert. Because without conclusion, you can't have a thought. You need conclusions and conclusions and conclusions about everything. Now I need to conclude, this is introvert, this is extrovert. Otherwise, my thought every time freaks, okay, who the, who the hell is she? But human faculties are such, I don't have to conclude, I can just look. This moment, how she is. That's all that matters. Yesterday how she was, doesn't matter, isn't it? And tomorrow how she's going to be, you have no clue, yes or no? Do not fix life, either yours or anybody else's. Do not fix it because what you're calling as human life is a possibility. To make this possibility into your reality, you have to travel a distance. Do you have the courage and the commitment to travel the distance? That's all the question is. The simple thing is this, see, if your joy, your sadness, your happiness, your misery is determined by something or somebody around you, the chances of you being joyful in your life is remote. For every one of you, your life is precious, isn't it? It's a precious life. If something is precious, where do you want to invest this life? Into what do you want to invest this precious life? If this is a worthless life, throw it somewhere. If this is a precious life, what do you want to invest this life into? If you look at it this way, you will find something truly worthwhile to do. 
If you think in terms of how to earn a living, how to get this kind of thing, that kind of thing, then you will do something silly that you will regret for the rest of your life. Most people are a regret, that's why they're going around joylessly because they're not doing what they want to do. They are not creating what really matters to them, they're doing something for a living. Earning a living is not a big deal for a human being. Every creature, every worm, insect, bird, animal is earning their living, isn't it so? With such a big brain, what is the big deal about earning a living? What is it that you're going to create? This precious life, where are you going to invest it? Are you going to invest it in something that's truly worthwhile or are you going to throw it away as a worthless thing? This is the important thing because what you call as my life is just a certain amount of time and energy, isn't it? As you sit here, your life is ticking away or no? You are young, you may not be thinking like this, but actually it's ticking away. What is ticking away is not time, what is ticking away is your life. So this energy that you call as my life, how are you going to invest it? Because if you are doing something truly worthwhile, it gets over before you know what happened. Only if you are doing something worthless, it feels like a long life. Something that happened ten years ago, you can still suffer, isn't it? Huh? Something that may happen day after tomorrow, you already suffer. <laughs> what happened ten years ago or even ten days ago, does it exist right now? Does it exist right now? What may happen day after tomorrow, does it exist right now? No. So if you suffer something that does not exist, should we call you sane or insane? Success means what? I made it. What did you make? I bought a house site. You would think that's an achievement. I got a job. I made this much money. It's a very constipated way of looking at life. I want young people to look at it in terms of how we can do something that cannot be done in this lifetime. Oh, what will happen if I don't fulfill it? If you if you work incessantly and still at the end of your life the job is not done, it doesn't mean you're a failure, it means you had a great vision. <laughs> That's what it means. If you… if you go outside in the garden and try to catch an ant, who is born here, who's grown up here and probably he'll die here, if you try to catch him, he'll say, okay, crush me if you want. Is it so? He'll do everything to protect himself. He values his life, isn't it? Very much or no? Tiny little creature that we may not even notice, we may step on him without even seeing him, unfortunately. But he values his life immensely. Does he or no? He's got spark. But you, a human being, at least on this planet, you're the peak of evolution, physiologically at least. What the most evolved creature on the planet means is, it has the most complex neurological system and it has the highest level of cerebral capability. That means you can think, you can remember, you have memory. You have a very vivid sense of memory and a fantastic sense of imagination. An ant doesn't have such a vivid sense of memory, nor does he have any great imagination, he has some. But he has a presence of mind about the life that he is living. Because the education systems that you're going through right from kindergarten level is such that it is about everything except you. 
Somebody is PhD in tourism, somebody is PhD in biotechnology, somebody is PhD in something. Nothing about this. How does this function? There is no attention at all. A human being exists in three times. He lives because of the richness of his memory. The present experience is important and how vivid is your imagination for tomorrow is very important. <laughs>